Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Today's video is actually going to be a, um, talking about the cooling system of the car. This car has been sitting for a long time, so it's going to need some work. And we're going to look over it today and make sure everything's working in that department. So first, we're going to we're gonna um, flush the radiator because the coolant's been sitting for a really long time. So over time, coolant can get um, really gunky and thick, which cannot be good for the, the coolant system. So what we're going to do is we're going to flush it with water to make sure it's all out of there. Okay, and I'm going to show you uh, what hose to take off and what's going to be okay. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take a hose and put it at the top of the radiator and we're going to try to flush out all of the gunk and all of like the coolant that's been there for a, for a long, long time because when coolant sits for a long time, like she said, it just kind of gunks up and it, it doesn't make the adequate cooling for your cooling system. So I'll cut to that. So on this particular model, and which is the van, which is a B300 base, um, the radiator is uh, used on all vehicles, it's located in the front. So right here we have your radiator cap, we have your radiator inlet hose going to the thermostat to the engine, and then we also have your lower radiator hose, which is right here, and you can see this is the, the bottom of the radiator. So to flush your radiator, we're gonna go ahead and remove the bottom hose. So when you put water in the top of the radiator, which is right here, we're just gonna stick the hose right here. All of the stuff that's been built up in the radiator will naturally flow down with gravity and push out all that junk in the out of the lower holes inlet because it's gonna be already gonna be disconnected. So then again, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect this hose right here that's at the bottom of the radiator and all that junk and gunk is gonna flush out that way, which is gonna be good. And that's going to be the first part of the radiator flush. So right now we're going to enter the hose through the top of the, the radiator hose. Like that. And then it's going to come out right here. And it's flushing all the coolant as you can see. All the bad coolant. Yeah, the it's bad been there for a coolant. long time. And we're going to do that until the water looks a little bit clearer. See, and look like... Clear getting clear and looks clean that's good so right now the coolant should be or the radiator should be a flush and it should be cleaner over time when the car heats up it will break down more so it will be good to change the coolant in another thousand miles when we do get it running and driving oh which is already running and driving now <laughs> sorry okay we're back and we're actually um, already flushed the coolant system and we put everything back together and went ahead and actually filled up the this um, and the cooling reservoir and the radiator with water because we're gonna go ahead and turn the car on and see if we have any leaks. And the reason why I chose water because it's a cheaper alternative to putting coolant in there because we're looking for leaks right now. So if it does leak, it's just gonna be straight up leaking coolant on the ground and all that, which is not good. But I wouldn't recommend using water in your cooling system for a long longevity because one, coolant has better cooling processes, like coolant properties in it than water. And also, um, it also, you know, if your cooling, your cooling system is working at like max performance, it can increase the longevity of your engine and also produce more power because engines don't like to be hot. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and start the car. I just got the battery hooked up and you know, engine started and then we're going to let it run. Hopefully it starts because it was having a little rough time starting the last video. So hopefully it idles and all that and I got everything hooked up. I'm going to go ahead and take off some belts too because the belts are making some noise. But yeah, I'm going to let it run and hopefully you won't see any leaks. If we do see some leaks, then we're going to have to replace some hoses. So I'll cut to that. Okay, so now we've got the engine running. It did have a really hesitant start. And it's running a little bit rough, but you know, it's going to work out its kinks right now. So I'm going to go ahead and hopefully it idles. And it sounds like it's idling right now. My foot's not on the gas. I'm gonna give him some more gas. It's backfiring a little bit on the car. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that idle for a little bit. Oh, oh, I think it's dying. Oh, it died. I'm gonna turn it over again. Starts right up, that's good. So it wants to run, but don't forget, this thing's been sitting for 15 years, so there's gonna be a lot of stuff inside that carburetor that's not good, so it needs to run. And that's what we're gonna, we're gonna let it run for a little bit. So 
what's running right now. Yep, just pretty much letting it run. I'm actually gonna go ahead and turn it off. Go ahead and turn it off. Because um, the two belts, there is two belts right now, and those two belts go to the alternator. And um, I don't know what else it goes to. It goes to the alternator right here and also to the uh, AC compressor. You can see these two belts right here and they're actually not even on it. They're just kind of like flaring around. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those belts off because I don't need those belts just yet. I can go ahead and power the battery with the charger. My goal right now is just to make the thing run well. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and look under it. It's still leaking a little bit because I did pour some water over here, but it doesn't look too bad for the cooling system. Um, I'm sure I'm going to run, into, run down the road in more uh, problems with the cooling system once we start driving and all that. But yeah, now you can see the van actually runs and drives. Well, it, it runs right now. Driving not so yet, but it's running and it backfired a little bit. So I think the next move for the engine is to go ahead and take that carburetor off and rebuild it. Because, like I said, over time, fuel, when it sits inside of a carburetor, it, it's not... It doesn't sit well and it dissociates and gums up carburetors and i do have like carburetor ungumming thing but it doesn't work so well for carbs that's been sitting for about 15 years so i'm gonna go ahead and um down the road take that carb off and rebuild it but i think our next move is is just i don't know just get the thing running start picking at small details and um overall try to make it more reliable daily and maybe focus a little bit on the interior. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and thanks for watching the video like always. It's really nice to you know, have you guys around and um, I always read the comments. You guys can go ahead and um, drop a comment and all that. And if you like our videos and you like our little how-to guides, go ahead and drop a subscribe because it helps us and kind of reassures us that you know, we're doing something that you guys like. And um, so yeah, thank you for watching and have a great day.